as we're joined by Eric Edelman, former United States ambassador to Turkey and former undersecretary for defense policy. Eric, as always, we're pleased to have you with us here on America's Forum. J.D., great to be with you this morning. So, Ambassador, let's start with the latest from the region. What are you hearing involving the fight between ISIS and Iraq? Well, I think, first of all, uh, there's some, uh, there is some good news. It does look like some Iraqi security forces are working uh, together with uh, Peshmerga forces to um, attack uh, the ISIS uh, troops uh, in different parts of uh, Iraq. That's a positive development. Uh, that's a, a reflection in part of our involvement and the airstrikes that we've carried out. Um, I think, you know, we need to be honest about this. I think it's good to have these enabling forces that are being sent up there to help with this humanitarian mission. It's obviously going to take uh, some logistical effort to get a lot of the uh, Yazidi minority uh, folks who fled to Sinjar Mountain. Um, but there's going to be an ongoing humanitarian uh, uh you know, requirement here for some time. We're going to have a lot of forces in there. And the bottom line is, in the end, it's not going to be enough to contain ISIS. We're going to have to defeat them. We defeated uh, the uh, precursor of ISIS during the surge in 2007, 2008, and we're going to have to do that again now. But as some of the former military officers who were involved have said, it takes an army to beat an army, and I think this time it will be the Iraqi security forces and the Peshmerga, but we will have to have some more U.S. advisors, I believe, with them, uh, and we will probably incur some casualties as a result of that. Speaking of the Peshmerga, the, the presence of the Kurds, you served as United States ambassador to Turkey. As I've understand, uh, understood it geopolitically, the Turks are always ill at ease about the Kurds and that common border they share. Uh, given the stance of Erdogan, which is very different from what we've seen from other other Turkish governments in the past, uh, is there still that unease, or is there a growing realization that somebody has to deal with ISIS, and it might as well be the Kurds? Uh, there's been a big uh, transformation in the Turkish uh, attitude and approach to uh, the uh, Kurdish problem in general, both in its uh, Turkish dimension, but also uh, regionally and particularly with the Kurdistan regional government. Uh, you're quite right. Traditionally, uh, Turkey has been extremely sensitive about the Kurdish issue. About 20 percent of the population uh, of Turkey is Kurdish. And there's been a long-standing fear on the part of Turkish officials that you could get, uh, that an independent Kurdistan would essentially dismember the modern state of, of Turkey. Uh, that began to change uh, over time some years ago. Uh, there has been uh, because of the success of the Kurdistan regional government, a lot of Turkish trade and investment uh, in, in Kurdistan. Uh, and uh, you see cooperation now, including with some Kurdish forces in Syria, uh, to deal with the rise of ISIS, to which Turkey, by the way, contributed, unfortunately, um, now that it's become uh, you know, a, a super uh, problem for Turkey and has metastasized on its border. So there is relative calm, and perhaps we could call it an alliance. I don't want to overstate it, Ambassador, but I want to make sure I understand. At least there's a realization that it's important for the Kurds to be there, the Peshmerga taking on ISIS, and given the investment, it, it's, it's a, a different situation involving uh, Turkey and the Kurds this morning than we've seen in times past. Yes, I, I wouldn't say it's an alliance, I, and I think you're right to be cautious about you know, seeing too much in, in what's happened, but it's definitely a different attitude on the part of, uh, uh, of the Turkish government. Uh, Erdogan has uh, talked a good game uh, for about the last decade, really, about trying to address the Kurdish problem inside Turkey. Uh, the problem he's going to face now as president of Turkey is the internal Turkish problem now is uh, you know, it irretrievably connected to this larger regional uh, conflict that's going on and the uh, problems with the Kurdish population in Iraq and Syria. Eric, and Iraq. you said you said something a little earlier that we need to return to. Mm -hmm. And uh, since your portfolio includes a stint with the Pentagon as Under Secretary uh, of Defense for Policy, something very important. You were saying it's going to take more military from the United States and that we need to prepare for casualties. Now, the administration is saying, no, no, not going to be ground troops in Iraq. They've changed the nomenclature, advisors to assessors. As you assess the situation, what kind of numbers are we talking about? 
Well, look, it's it's hard to say, and you know, I, I you know, uh, what I'm saying is, not, you know, not, you know, in any way influenced by any inside knowledge because I'm outside of government now. But uh, it just seems to me that we're going to inevitably uh, have a, to take a larger role in this uh, because we have some capabilities that only the United States can provide in terms of logistics and coordination, intelligence, uh, surveillance and reconnaissance, et cetera. Uh, but we also are, you know, have played a traditionally a very important advisory role uh, before we left in uh, January 2012 uh, with the Iraqi security forces. We've already begun uh, to, you know, to play some of that role again. The, the, you know, there's a lot of word games going on here. I mean, originally the president was saying we would have any, no boots on the ground. Now we've got boots on the ground, but they're saying they don't count because only certain kinds of boots on the ground count. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to need to be in a combat role necessarily, but we will have people who are in advisory cap you know, capabilities, I believe, uh, who will see combat and who may be wounded. We need to prepare the public for that, that, that you know, we have a, a vital national interest here. It's been uh, identified as such by the uh, Attorney General, by the Secretary of Homeland Security, that ISIS represents a threat to the U.S. homeland. It's much better for us to try and take this on over there than uh, wait for them to strike us here. While there may be advisors on the ground and you say there may be more of them needed, we do know that American air power has been used in somewhat limited fashion. Speaking of the airstrikes that we've conducted in northern Iraq, Lieutenant General Phil Mayville spoke out recently. Let's take a listen to what the general had to say and then I'd like to get your reaction. I think um, in the immediate areas where we have focused our strikes, we've had a very temporary effect. And, um, but I, and, no, and we may have blunted uh, some some tactical decisions to move in those directions to move uh, further east to Erbil. What I expect the ISL, ISIL to do uh, is to look for other things to do, to, to pick up and move elsewhere. And where would ISIS move next, Ambassador, if you agree with the uh, General's assessment? Well, I actually worked with General Mayville when he was Colonel Mayville back when I was Ambassador to Turkey and he was in northern Iraq, so he knows the situation very well. Um, uh, no, I, I agree with uh, what he has said. Essentially, it's uh, consistent with what I was saying earlier. The airstrikes can and have had, you know, an important tactical f effect, uh, and and for the better. But in the end, uh, you cannot uh, defeat ISIS uh, purely with uh, air power and airstrikes. It can be an important part of the solution, but you have to have uh, a a broader uh, military approach to this and a broader political approach because uh, this is not purely a military problem. There's a big political dimension to this. And there is also a humanitarian dimension to this, Ambassador. We've been talking about air strikes. There have been any number of air drops. Do, do those types of projects work out well with what we're seeing on Mount Sinjar? Would you describe these air drops as a success? Well, it's a little hard to tell. You get conflicting reports. Uh, I've heard some reports that uh, some of the uh, uh, local indigenous Iraqi forces have been more successful with air drops because they're uh, coming in at lower altitude with helicopters. There was a helicopter crash uh, during one of those efforts yesterday. Um, but uh, I'm sure it's having some positive effect. It may not be having as much as we would like. And on that the note, Ambassador, we'll have to leave it there. Eric Edelman, as always, we thank you for your insights and analysis. Look forward to having you back in the not too distant future. Now, coming up. Always with the growth of ISIS, was it an intelligence failure, a policy failure, a combination of both? Well, we'll discuss this with people who really know the intelligence community, including my former colleague, Pete Hoekstra, who served as the House Intelligence Committee Chairman. They'll bring some intelligence to this conversation next on America's Forum.